I know there's a lot of hatred for this book, for certain concepts in it are terrible. Therefore, keep in mind I'm not advocating the practice of any ideologies presented in this review. This video is merely informative rather than practical. Let's begin. The first one is concerning ethics and morals. Machiavelli offers a fresh perspective on ethics saying how a person is unable to be righteous all the time. He says, for a man who wishes to act entirely up to his professions of virtue, soon meets with what destroys him among so much that is evil. So Niccolo basically denoted that people are not always good. The real world doesn't reflect this truth. You'll always be confronted with situations that forces you to be a little bit evil, or at least in the eyes of others. Here's a perfect example. Let's imagine Jenny. She wants to be your girlfriend, but you're not into her, you don't like her that much. So what would you do? Option A. Appear to be a saint, wife up Jenny just so she doesn't think you're an asshole, but then have a fake relationship with her, she thinks you like her, but you don't. Option B, be real, say no from the start, get perceived as an asshole but have no fake relationships. Now what's absurd is how some people to this day would still prefer the first option. Why? Just so they can categorize themselves among the moral and righteous individuals. Or for instance, some people would give change to a homeless person not because they want to, but because they want to feel good about themselves or to appear righteous in front of their friends. Now let's make this concept a little bit easier to grasp. Imagine you're back in high school, a big bully is bullying you every single day. You have to buy lunch for the guy or it gets your ass kicked. Basically he's making a slave out of you. But since your parents taught you not to be cruel and to behave politely with everyone, then every time you get harassed and bullied, you wouldn't defend yourself. Even if you get punched in the fucking face, you wouldn't hit back, because that's not what good boys should do. That's not what mommy said you should do. Now I'm not promoting violence here, but I believe the idea is crystal clear. It's important to behave righteously and to avoid conflict at all costs, but it's as vital to learn how to defend yourself. Reality is is the basis of duality. As many great people there are in life, there is also a handful of individuals who couldn't care less but to manipulate and use you. If you don't anticipate to encounter bad people in life, hence you are in danger. So again, Machiavelli underlines how a person can't behave righteously all the time. Some instances forces you to be cruel, or at least in the eyes of others, as I said for example, saying no to a relationship or punching someone back for self-defense purposes. Niccolo illustrates how one, if firmly entrenched in morals, will sooner get eaten by the wolves or live a life full of fakeness. He remarks how these layers of ethics blind the person from seeing the real world as it is. For a man who wishes to act entirely up to his professions of virtue soon meets with what destroys him among so much that is evil. And again, I'm not saying you have to be cruel with people, I'm not promoting Machiavellianism here, nor do I encourage the practice of these principles. Applying the ideas is merely up to you. I'm emphasizing this because some of Machiavelli's ideologies can cause disaster if applied thoughtlessly. For example, this one. It's better to be feared than to be loved if you cannot be both. This principle can prompt you a handful of trouble if you apply it in your relationships. It basically implies if people don't love you, you should terrorize and threaten them. Which is by far the worst strategy to go about bonding with others. Everyone sees what you appear to be, few experience what you really are. Niccolo cites if a prince aspires to maintain power, he ought to appear faithful, moral and good on the outside but on the inside he has none of these qualities, meaning that a prince should put on a front a mask of goodness but on the inside he has none of what he appears to be. So these are mainly the two principles that I've disliked the most from the book. But it's okay to be open minded and read opposing ideas for educational purposes, ok? Now let's move on to the next one. He who seeks to deceive will always find someone who will allow himself to be deceived. 
This idea is more workable in politics than in other fields, but you can also find it fairly used in business. A book titled Six Pack Abs in One Week sells more than a book titled Six Pack in Six Months. Meaning, if some people are smart enough to recognize the fakeness of these products, there will also and always be others who are dumb enough to allow themselves to be deceived. The same idea clearly mirrored in politics. When a politician comes up to people saying, guys, listen, if you manage to better yourself as a person, you'll be able to offer more value and therefore make more money. But people don't want to hear that. People want to hear what they want to hear. They never elect the guy who says what's the right thing to do based on reality, but choose the guy who verbalizes what they want to hear. And what do people want to hear? Don't worry about money, we'll handle that for you. You don't have to risk building businesses, keep working 9 to 5 and eventually you'll get promoted and the money will come. The money will come. Never miss the news and watch politicians fighting all night. So concerning politics, people would rather be deceived than listen to the truth. Because they are too lazy to think, act, change and the list goes on. In parting, I'd like to evoke, applying the principles is mainly up to you. I would think of this video as informative more than practical. And as always, thanks for watching and see you soon.